Hey everyone, I'm sure you are all looking forward to the new year and I believe that if we are going to end the year, we have to end it on a really good note. And what's that good note? It is learning some new words, some new ways of speaking. So in today's lesson, I'm going to bring to you some most used slang words of this year. Now, why am I teaching you slang words? Well, let me tell you that slang words are informal language that people use in a very natural way, especially when they are having daily conversations with people, when they are meeting and greeting people. No one uses the textbook kind of language. So if you know the most used slang words of this year, I am sure it will be a good way to go into the new year. Don't you think? Well, let's have a look. The first slang word that you want to use is rent free. Believe it or not, almost everybody was using this word this year. But what does it really mean? Do all of us pay rent? Is our rent free? Well, not exactly. Rent is what you pay when you stay in somebody else's house, right? But what does it mean to live rent free? It basically means that you are someone who is obsessed with someone or something. Okay, so there are some people you really like, you really admire, or maybe you even hate. And that's why you are obsessed with them. You can't stop talking about them. So I can say something like the media keep talking about him. Some kind of an actor maybe. Why? Because he apparently lives rent free in their heads. So a lot of famous people are, you know, the object of someone's love or hatred even. And that is why they live rent free. People are obsessed with them. All right. And then again, we have another slang word, which is extra. Okay, now extra actually means a little more <laughs> than required. Well, that's the literal meaning, but slang words don't always have literal meanings. So this word means that you are being too dramatic. You are being a little extra. So in a sentence, you could say, hey, it's just some spilt wine. No need to be so extra about it. Well, you know, some people have this tendency to be very dramatic. They kind of overreact and that's when they are being extra. Now, another very common slang word people use in general conversation is salty. Okay, when you put salt on your food, it gets a little salty, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking a kind of an attitude that a person shows. What attitude is this? Let's have a look. Some people react in a very offended way. Now, maybe what you've said was not meant to hurt or be offensive, but some people, they kind of react that way, which means they are salty. So. I can say, he got so salty, he was offended after I asked him to pay back the money he owed me, right? Do you know people who are salty? Well, for those of you who do, drop your comments in this video below. And then, this is a really a cool phrase, actually, it's a slang, but it's also a, a phrase used inside of a slang or a slang used inside of a phrase, whichever way you want to see it. Uh, it's passing the vibe check. Now, vibe is basically this general aura that you have around you, okay? And if you pass, which means if you clear the vibe check, it basically means that you have successfully shown that you are a cool and chilled out person, okay? So if someone thinks you're a cool person, you've passed the vibe check, okay? That's a good thing. It's kind of like a compliment that people pay you in a social circle or in a social setting. You could say, they played a dirty prank on her. But guess what? She simply laughed it off. She didn't care. So to me, she's a cool person. Why? She's totally passed the vibe check, right? That's amazing. You need to pass the vibe check. You need to have this chilled aura around you. Let's have a look at another slang, which is amped. This expression basically is a way of saying that you are very excited about something, okay? This holiday season, I am sure there are a lot of things you're probably amped about. I would say something like, this is my first live game. 
I am so amped to be watching my favorite players in person. For those who have watched the FIFA Live, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you are totally amped. And for those of you who are going to be amped this holiday season, let me know what it is that you are amped about, okay? Put those in the comments. Our next slang is for real, okay? Real basically means, you know, something that's really happening, something that's actually there. This expression, however, is a way of asking someone if they are really serious about what they said. So let's assume that someone has quit their job. It was a job that paid them a lot of money. It was a lucrative job, but they quit it. So I'm like, he quit his high paying job. Is he for real? How would he pay his mortgage? Okay, so for real is an expression that you use within a question to ask if someone is really serious about what they said or did. And mortgage is nothing but your home loan, which is the money that you borrow from your bank in order to pay back for the house that you loaned. Let's have a look at the next slang, which is, I can't even. What does this actually mean? Like a lot of you are probably thinking, this does not seem like a complete sentence. You're right, it's not a sentence. It's a phrase, which basically means, it's a way of saying you are overwhelmed with laughter or some kind of emotion. So let's say something is very funny, you'll say, I can't even. Or any other emotion, it could be anger, disgust, frustration. Let's, let, let's look at an example to understand this a little better. What she said on stage was nasty. I can't even. So as you can notice, I'm overwhelmed with the emotion of anger or maybe disgust. And when I heard her say something nasty, I'm like, what she said on stage was nasty. I can't even. It's a way of saying that you are overwhelmed with an emotion. I have another slang for you, which is period. Now, the full stop is also called a period. And when do we use a full stop? To say that this is the end of a sentence, right? Which is why this phrase or this word basically means that you don't want to discuss the matter any further. You are putting a full stop to the conversation. So, I would say he's too young to watch that web show, period. My nephew wanted to watch some web show, but I told him, sorry, you're not watching it, you're too young, period. We will not discuss this any further. We put a full stop to the conversation. Some more slang words for you. We have third wheel. Okay, well, normally a bicycle has two wheels. Okay, most of them do. I know you also have tricycles, but I'm not talking about that. So what is a third wheel? A third wheel is basically an extra person, okay? It's an odd number, right? Two is an even number, three is an odd number. So a third wheel is a person, an extra person in a romantic setting, okay? So in a romantic setting, you just want you and your partner to be there, but there's this other person who is kind of butting in between. So we call them the third wheel. So I would say, why is your friend third wheeling? We were meant to have a private date. So we were meant to be alone together. Why is your friend third wheeling? Why is he the extra person in a romantic setting? Have you come across those kind of people? Let me know in the comments below. Who has third wheeled you? Or have you been the one who's been third wheeling? I'd like to know. Um, we have something called as vanilla. Okay, now, I don't eat a lot of ice cream, but people who eat a lot of ice cream, I'm assuming that vanilla is supposed to be the more common flavor. There's nothing special about it. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what people believe, that vanilla is the most common flavor. Therefore, when we use the word vanilla in a slang-like manner, it basically is used to describe a person or a thing who is too boring or is too uninspiring. In other words, they are very common. There's nothing new or original about them, right? So I would say something like, I think that painting is too vanilla for my office wall. Okay, so maybe I wanna create my, you know, my office settings to look really nice and inspiring, but that office painting, too vanilla, too uninspiring. All right, we have another slang and the last one, which is wallflower. Okay, now you have real flowers which look very pretty, but then you have wallflowers which are just meant to give you this nice aesthetic look. 
but they do not really have any function, right. So, a wallflower refers to a person who is very shy and who wants to be unnoticed at parties. You know, you will see some people who are very shy, introverts, they want to like stay in the background, keep a low profile in social events. They are called wallflowers. They do not really do anything over there except just kind of stand and take it all in, ok. So, enough sentence I could say. Look at my brother sitting at the back, mm, he is an introvert. In other words, he is a total wallflower. He is staying shy, he wants to be unnoticed, he wants to keep a low profile. Uh, I am sure that if you use these slang words, you will sound so much more natural when you speak English, ok. So, by the end of this year, as you move into the new year, I want you to tell me what slang words are you going to use and maybe you want to make your sentences and drop them in the comments below, I will give you my personal feedback. So, get into the new year on a positive note, learning new words and learning slang words. Have a nice day, take care.